Ladies and gentlemen, this is your AEW Dynamite review on Friday, June 18th, 2021. Technically, in the East Coast, it is 12.10 uh, a.m. as the time of filming. So, we got my co-host here, you already know, Wesley Williams. Uh, happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday to you. You tell me I was the first person, and I said it twice. I said it twice now, so uh, happy birthday, dude. I just want to say that to start off the thing. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Joseph. Yeah, it, uh, officially 24 years old, man. 24 years I've been on this earth, and what a, what a 24 years has it been. You know, it's, it's been a wild ride, uh, but I'm truly thankful uh, to just see another day. Uh, I'm just very, very happy that I get to spend another year uh, of my life uh, just being surrounded by so many great people. Uh, it's great family, uh, and I thank the Lord above just for blessing me with such a great life. Uh, I just truly am grateful, and uh, I'm sure I'll get a lot of birthday wishes uh, once once we get into the official day. Once I wake up in the morning, I'll probably get a lot of happy birthdays uh, from my family and all that. But uh, it's uh, Joseph, you're officially the first man to wish me a happy birthday. So, man, it's quite, I, I'd say that's quite an honor there, sir. I think that's quite an honor for you to – but. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I really appreciate it, dude. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I can't I can't wait to start off my birthday talking about the best wrestling show on the planet, and that is AEW Dynamite tonight, final Friday show. Thank the Lord, it's over. We can finally stop talking about Friday Night Dynamite because next week we have the Saturday show, and then after that we're back on Wednesdays, baby. Thank God, dude. I cannot. I could not stand the Friday night shows. I am sitting here, folks. I am exhausted, man. I had eight hours of work today in the hot sun. Came home, watched four straight hours of pro wrestling. Obviously, we had SmackDown before Donovan, which um, I do have a really busy day tomorrow with my graduation party. But we will be doing a SmackDown review tomorrow morning, talking about Rey Mysterio, Roman Reigns, inside the Hell in the Cell. Um, but I feel like just... For a way, like, I was tired and stuff like that from a long day. I wasn't really into this show tonight. It was okay for what it was. Um, obviously, the cage fight with Wardlow and Hager is probably the most talked about thing going into the show. Probably the most talked about thing coming out of the show as well. Um, I, 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 we'll, we'll get into it. I have I have different opinions on it. But uh, we'll, we'll see how we both have our opinions on it. But once again, thank you guys for joining us here tonight um, on the channel. We appreciate it. Um, we're going to get right into the show right away. But once once again, like I said in the Hell in the Cell preview and predictions, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you who came out, who commented, liked. We got some new subscribers from the Danny Limelight video. That, that video that interview uh was outstanding and it did great numbers on the channel and it tells me and it tells wesley that this is not the end of these interviews we're going to try to find more wrestlers to get on here uh obviously i which i'm back at work full time now we'll have to see how my schedule is with that but um man just everybody uh thank you for all the support from that interview man and the out the, just the overwhelming support it was unbelievable yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, I already said like this was just a very, a very big dream come true for me uh, dude, to have the honor of just interviewing a pro wrestler. I'm very happy that Danny Limelight was the first. Uh, definitely somebody who has tons of potential in this business, and he's still very young. And I think he's definitely going to be a breakout star. You know, just give it like a year or so. I feel like he could definitely be a breakout star, whether it's AEW new, in, in New Japan, it doesn't matter. But uh, folks, you know. We promise you, we're gonna we're gonna try our, our hardest to get more people in on the Big Fight Field channel for more interviews. Because what we did back on Monday was a grand success. Uh, I'd say we definitely hit a home run with it, and the support you guys gave us. I mean, the support my my own friends and family gave me, uh, and to both me and Joseph. I mean, it was just truly heartwarming to see. And and guys, I could not uh, thank you all enough from the bottom of my heart for just being there for us. And as we had just such a big big. Uh, opportunity here and uh we i think we really uh, succeeded <laughs> mm -hmm. and once again before we get into tonight's show i want to thank everyone again 
uh, for the congratulations for this past week's graduation. Big accomplishment. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, ready to talk some dynamite, my friend. It kind of felt like and uh, it was there. It just kind of felt like the show was there tonight. But we are here. Uh, we, he's he's chugging a soda. Yeah, so. and I got I got myself a coke, man. It's it's late, man. I I I'm with Joseph. You know, we're both tired, and uh, you know, I got a birthday to celebrate tomorrow. So you know, I want to try and get at least a, a decent amount of rest so I can wake up in the morning and start my birthday off right. <laughs> yeah, dude. So we are gonna talk about dynamite right now. We opened up tonight's show with the MMA cage fight with Wardlow and Jake Hager. This went into the second round with about 45 seconds left where the referee, um, Aubrey Edwards, he, uh, she, she, she uh, stopped the match and Hager won the match via ref stoppage at the end of the match. Everybody came down. Um, at the end of the match, everybody came down. Such as Spears, uh, well, he was there. Spears and Jericho, MJF, um, Sam Guevara, which we will we will talk about those two uh, in a little bit before the main event. And um, you know, at first, I th- at the presentation, I will say, I thought the presentation was really cool. It made it feel like a legit MMA fight. But having second thoughts on it, I say a lot of people have uh, positive thoughts about it, and that that's okay. I personally was not that big of a fan of this. Um, I'm not a, a, like worked fights in professional wrestling, in my opinion. They just don't work. They never it doesn't it never worked in WWE when they did them. Like uh, you remember the whole brawl for all thing, right? Yeah. They did a whole they did a whole dark side of the ring on that. Um, I was not a, not that big of a fan of this. It was a worked fight. Like I like, it's very cool to see a big man like like Wardlow hit a Hurricane Rana in a wrestling match. That's awesome. But in an MMA fight, you would never see that happen. And I I, I did not like that when he hit the Hurricane Rana. They're doing power bombs to each other. So. Um, I, I don't know if I'm being too hard, but that's how I feel about the match. I loved the presentation, but I just didn't like the fight that much. Uh, personally, with me, uh, I felt like it could have been it could have been way worse than what we actually got. Uh, because, like, I, I went into this, you know, I mean, I think we all went into this thinking, like, if this could be really good or this could be very disastrous. I'm happy it ended up being a complete disaster. Because, uh, no. I mean, I, it really wasn't. I mean, for what it was... I can accept it for I for what it was. I can just accept it for what I mean. It wasn't anything blow away, but I, I think for what they did, it was at least like decent. And I I, I still I'd say enjoyed myself. I mean, the crowd definitely brought the energy. Uh, and you know, with like this match and with the show, uh, I, I that, that was definitely something that carried over like throughout the show. Is like I really enjoyed the energy. And I don't know if some of it might have been piped in noise. Like I, I have no idea, but I, they did have quite. Uh, a few people there uh, and down uh, by ringside, but uh, for what it was, I thought it was decent. Uh, like I said, it could been it could have been a lot worse than what we got. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I pitched last week when we were talking about it, like they should have really went into this doing it just like a shoot MMA fight, just like straight up, just do a shoot MMA fight with these two. They don't even book a winner, and we unfortunately didn't get that. But it, it was worked, obviously. But uh, I think for what they did, you know, I. I can commend them some for it, but, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, oh, I'm definitely going to go back and, and watch it again, or AEW should continue to do MMA cage fights. I, I'd say this should be the one and only time they do it, but I'm happy it just didn't know, it didn't end up being a complete train wreck. Oh, trust me. I, I, I don't think it was a – it wasn't disastrous. It wasn't – oh, my – it wasn't that – it wasn't, like, awful – Low level stuff. I just was not a fan of it personally. So um, that's really all I have to say about that. So the next match we had Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky versus Darby Allen, who did not choose to have a tag team. He chose not to have a tag team partner. Um, I really thought that uh, Darby was going to win when he tied up Ethan Page and he hit the coffin drop on Scorpio Sky. 
Ethan Page pulled out Darby Allen, even when he was still tied up, and he pulled him out very aggressively. Uh, he cuts, he gets himself untied, and he hits Darby. He throws him into the ring post, and oh my god, how that that was like you can you can hear that I, I was I was actually a little scared. Watch. Yeah, no, I heard that you literally, I mean, that was probably the one spot, that was definitely like one spot of the match that like made me cringe so badly because you literally heard the ding off of the ring post. Like you heard Darby bounce right off and you heard like a little ding when it when he hit off it. It was, I mean, like, uh, it's like every week I see Darby wrestle. It's like, God, how, how is he still walking? Like how, man? Like it just doesn't make sense to me. This guy is like, it's like the saying goes nowadays. The guy's just built different. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. He is. He really is. <laughs> he is built different. But uh, Ethan Page hits him with a with an ego's edge, and and Page and Sky get the win. Absolutely the right move. You're not gonna you're not gonna have Darby Allen beat both guys in a two on one handicap. That's just not realistic. I don't like when um. I don't like when WWE does it because it makes the two guys that lose to the one guy make it look ridiculous unless they're going to lose to someone like Roman Reigns or The Fiend, someone who's dominant, like um, like out of nowhere, like who like random names winning a two-on-one. I, I don't like that. So the fact that Darby Allen took this loss here is good because Sky and Paige – Definitely needed this win. I don't see them clicking as a tag team at all. But Darby Allen loses nothing from this loss at all tonight. No, this uh, for what it was. This was this was a great uh, handicap match. Uh, I thought Darby really held his own in there, uh, just going at it by himself against Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Again, you know, still not into the tag team. I'm especially not into the name of the tag team men of the year. I mean, that's the name you gave these guys. I mean, are we at the Academy Awards? <laughs> or am I at a wrestling show? What what is that? men of the year? Okay, but yeah, that's just kind of it's adding more layers of me not liking this whole duo. But anyway, uh, yeah, Paige and Sky win. That was the right call for sure. Uh, they would have looked like a couple of jabronis if they if they lost. And no offense to Darby Allen, but if Darby beat both of them at the same time, that would have made them look really bad. Um, I don't know where we go from here with this. Uh, I'm really really ready for Darby to move on to something else. To be yeah. honest, uh, I'm ready for this team with Paige and Sky. I, it looks like it's not ending anytime soon, but I wish these guys would just be pushed as singles guys like I've wanted this whole time. But we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm at, it, Sting's definitely going to be back in the picture here with this whole feud, but I just don't know where else you go with it. I think the one thing you can do, like the last thing you could possibly do, is a one-on-one match with, with – uh, Ethan Page and Darby Allen, because we've seen their history in the Indies, and they they we probably they probably have some great chemistry together. So maybe at a Road Rager or a Fighter Fest, that's the end of the feud. But yeah, uh, Darby Allen it, he needs to move on to uh, bigger and better things because uh, he he definitely deserves to be in that. So we'll have to see what happens. And by the way, I had to do it. Now that you got the Coke, I had to bring out the Pepsi, so. Oh, we got the big feud going on Big Fight Feel. Oh, man. Coke yeah, versus right? Pepsi, man. I don't know. I need that. I will say this. I will say this, though. I, I enjoy Coke, obviously, but I am more of a Pepsi guy. I am more of a, Now, I know that's probably going to upset my, Southern, my fellow Southern folk, but I actually am a bit more of a fan of Pepsi. I just find I like the sweeter taste. It has a bit of a sweeter taste than Coke. Yeah. And so I enjoy the sweeter taste. I'm a sweet guy. You know, I'm a sweet guy over here. I'm a sweetie. What can I say? That's <laughs> why I, I enjoy the Pepsi more. It, it feels the same, but I, I enjoy the Pepsi more than I do the Coke. Yeah. Per, per, yep. per, personally. Yeah, I, I enjoy both. But yeah, Pepsi, I give like a little bit more of the edge. So, yeah. but here we here we are talking about Pepsi versus Coke. <laughs> you know, the, anything can happen on the Dynamite reviews, folks. <laughs> Orange Cassidy uh, for Cesar Bononi. I mean, it was what it was. This match was kind of a throwaway to me. Uh, you know what spot I hated when all of the members of uh, the Wingmen 
were standing on the outside of the ring together, all huddled up. The best friends were in the ring. <laughs> and they freaking threw Orange Cassidy up. Like, what the heck, man? You can't, you can't define, um, like, a high spot better than that. I thought that was ridiculous. But, Our, but man, he got some height off of that throw, though. Holy crap. I mean, I that, 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 like, seeing that, though, I was just like, wow. Okay, they really threw him, but... Uh, in my in my opinion, yeah, this was a throwaway match. This match didn't really. I mean, you could have gone without it, but I will say this. I mean, it all it was chaotic, and it really shouldn't have been as chaotic as it was because that's always that seems to have been a frequent problem with AEW is that they will have matches where it just gets too chaotic, where the referee looks stupid, and everything's just out of control. That was a factor in this match. I saw some people talking about that online. But honestly, I thought this was more fun going into the, like watching this match happen. It was more fun than I originally anticipated. Like at least it wasn't like a boring like okay. Like I I I honestly had a little bit of fun with this because I was like yeah it was chaotic and that that is something definitely to you know pinpoint and to you know criticize. I'm not gonna you know sit here and not say that, but. For me personally, like I watched it and like that was one of the parts of the show that like even though I'm like real tired and stuff, like it kind of woke me up a little bit. I was like, okay, wow, this is actually a bit more eventful than I honestly thought it was going to be. So that's that's my honest opinion on it. I get the whole, yeah, you know, people thought it was way too chaotic. That is a, th- a problem with AEW that they really need to fix because they do book certain matches like way too chaotic to the point where everybody just looks dumb. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So. um before we get into the next match, I actually want to talk about something that that um, was not related to tonight's show. They kind of talked about it, but um, it was broken Wednesday morning, and uh, Wednesday morning, some, some Wednesday morning afternoon around there, um, right before my graduation started, uh, AEW Tony Khan announced in an interview with Barstool Sports that they are going to be running uh, AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. September 22nd at the Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York. Um, okay, I, I know, number one, this show is going to be absolutely pay-per-view quality loaded. I've heard, I've, I think I've seen people, on, uh, wrestlers on Twitter already state that. Uh, Tony Khan said that in an interview. And as a fan's perception, I don't need to read rumors. I already know that that show is going to be loaded and the AEW is going on a big, big East Coast tour coming up, which kind of makes me sad because I'll be away in college, but it is what it is. Um, September 15th, they'll be in Newark, New Jersey, which is literally an hour and a half away from me. Then they'll be in Queens, New York, the 22nd, that big show. The 29th, they'll be in Rochester. And then in August, uh, October 6th, they will be back at Philadelphia. That makes me very sad, man. But what do you think about this Arthur Ashe Stadium? It is a 25,000 seating arena. It's a tennis stadium. I, I'm really happy about this. Oh, man. Uh, if you're a wrestling fan, I mean, I don't see how you couldn't be excited or happy about this. Uh, 20, I mean, this, this definitely, this will probably be AEW's biggest show to date. And it's not even like a pay-per-view because you got like that big of a capacity to be filled. And, and see, you know, there, there's all these, you know, shills, of course, saying that, oh, AEW's not going to fill up that much. OK, well, we'll see how AEW's going up until we get to September, because I guarantee you that they're going to be on a massive momentum, just momentum run, just like they were going into Revolution and coming out of Revolution back in 2020 before, of course, the chaos started in the world. But they were on the biggest run of momentum at that point and i'm telling you they're going to get back to that like once we get because september is quite a ways away i mean we're in june right now we got july august and then september that's plenty of time for aw to get back on a big momentum track so i honestly truly believe by that point and this will be after all out too they're going to have that that stadium filled to capacity i fully believe that man and it, it, it this is tremendous news and, and it's so funny too how you know people on twitter i was saying you know AEW invested so much money into their video game, the console game that they're working so hard on. They're taking all their precious time and effort on, unlike WWE and their video games, where they literally, then they just announced 2K22, and we haven't seen any gameplay footage, and that game comes out in like a few months. 
Meanwhile, AEW is taking all their time on this game, so they invested all their money in that. And here are all these these little trolls on social media. Oh, AEW is about to go under. Oh, they they're in the red. They wasted all their money, and now they're going to go under. Interesting, because literally the next day, this announcement comes up. So are they really going under, trolls? No, and I already got, went on a big rant the other night on, on uh, Twitter, and you can go and, want, and see that if you want. Just follow me at big underscore West 18 on Twitter. But I went on a big rant already, and it's just it's funny. Just, it's so great to just prove the trolls wrong once again, man. And so this was just another instance of that. I'm very excited. I cannot wait for this show. I'm excited, man. I think it's going to be – it's probably going to be – Maybe as big, probably bigger than the winter is coming and the uh, blood and guts shows. I can only imagine how the card is going to be. So we'll talk about this show more and more as we get closer to it. Um, right now, we're going to talk about uh, this was by far the best thing on the show. I thought tonight we had Cody Rhodes and Brock Anderson versus QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. I know everybody is sick and tired. Of the Nightmare Family Factory feud, and I am too. But um, first off, I actually forgot, I almost forgot to say this, but before we get into the match, congratulations to Cody and Brandy on a newborn baby girl today. They named it Liberty. Um, so congratulations to Cody and Brandy. I just had to say that to get out of the way. Respectful to say, but I thought this was by far the best thing on the entire show. They did the right thing. Brock Anderson got over. He took. He got the. He got the winning pin for his team by pinning Aaron Solo with a roll up. On was there to celebrate. Um, did you find this interesting or no? Because Cody Rhodes was just sitting in the tunnel when Brock was celebrating. Did you catch that? I caught that. I did catch that actually. Yeah, that that was very interesting. Now I know people going into this thought like. You know, oh, Brock should turn on uh, Cody because of the whole former feud between uh, the Rhodes family and then, you know, of course, the Four Horsemen and, and that whole uh, feud back in the day. So, yeah, that was something that people kind of pitched. So I think that was a little seed planted for something coming up uh, when it comes to Cody and Arn Anderson and what might play out with that. So who knows? Yeah, because I think everybody's in agreement that um, – you know, we need to see a shift of character from Cody. And it's just like, the, it's almost being the same thing um, in these feuds. But th this could be interesting. I, I was I was really happy with Brock's debut tonight. I, en I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, this was a really good tag team match. Brock Anderson, he fit well. Um, and... Um, I, I lost my words there, but he fit well in the match. And, you know, like I said, there was the right decision. And Brock, Brock got the pin. He didn't hit a spine buster there, so I was a little disappointed by that. But um, QT Marshall hit the spine buster, which is the wrong person. But uh, the baby faces won. And I, I was happy with This was by far the best thing on the show. Yeah, uh, this was definitely a very impressive debut for Brock. I'm very happy for the guy. I think he has loads of potential. Uh, I definitely see, like, shades of his dad uh, in there uh, when it comes to uh, his wrestling ability. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, he has a lot of potential. I think he really uh, impressed here in this uh, in this tag team match with Cody uh, against um, QT and Aaron Solo. But, yeah, we'll see uh, what happens going forward. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, very impressive debut, uh, very good tag team match. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely one of the better parts of tonight's show. Absolutely. So we'll have to see what happens with uh... – Brock in the future. Um, next, we had an interview with Andrade and Jim Ross. I, I honestly, I was watching uh, basketball at this point, so I really didn't get much out of it. But what I heard, he said uh, at the end, he said that him himself and Vicky Guerrero have a big surprise coming up. I don't know what that could be. People are saying Thea Trinidad. Uh, I mean, that's the obvious thing. I don't think she's. I don't think she's going to be in AEW. I, I. So I don't know what they have up their sleeve. So, you know, we'll have to see. They already. Uh, he was already talking about the world title and the TNT title. Um, let's see what happens. Is it too early for him to go after a championship? You think? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely do it like you do with everybody else. Build them up, have them move up in the ranking system, get in the top five, and then challenge for a title. Don't just give them a title shot just right out of the gates. Uh, but I'm happy uh, Jim Ross didn't butcher his words uh, this week with uh, Andrade's name. He called, I think he called him Andrade the Idol. So it's like that was a safe bet with JR. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was the big takeaway from this interview was that Andrade and Vicky have a big surprise plan. Who or what that might that surprise might be, we will have to see in the coming weeks. I already seen a couple of people pitch the idea of a, a former friend of Andrade's maybe coming along, and that uh, former friend of his w- w- goes by the name of Tetsuya Naito from New Japan. Remember their days in Los uh, Inarobles uh, de Japón. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, with the working relationship with AEW New Japan, who knows? Uh, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see where they go with this surprise. Uh, Andrade, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just still super happy he's in AEW, man. He, he's going to have so many amazing matches with so many talent, so much talent uh, here, and it's just going to be very fun to watch. I'm not sure when they're going to debut him. I, I imagine they're going to debut him on one of those theme shows in July. I feel like that's one of those shows is like the perfect place for him to debut. And I already uh, had uh, pitched the idea, I believe here on Dynamite about uh, Andrade and Matt Seidel, that being Andrade's first opponent is Matt Seidel. I feel like who who better than Matt Seidel? I mean, Matt Seidel has proven that he's a great workhorse uh, in AEW and he can pretty much put on a great match with really anybody. And so why not let uh, that be Andrade's first opponent? Yep, you said that last week, and you know, that's a good idea, I think so. Uh, next, we had Penelope before for Julia Hart. I'm very sorry that I really didn't get much. I started to teeter a little bit, if you, if you guys know what I mean, like kind of like fall asleep a little bit. Like I said, that long day kind of kicked me. But uh, Penelope Ford won. She tapped out Julia Hart, and... Um, she kept the submission hold on. Uh, after the match, Miro came out, the TNT champion. I was like, what is Miro doing here? Uh, in this segment of all segments, um, what they did was they set up a TNT title match for the June 30th show against Brian Pillman Jr., which I I, I can get behind that. Uh, we're going to get um, Brian Pillman Jr., versus Miro for the TNT title on the June 30th Dynamite, which is the last Dynamite in Daly's place, which I, I can easily get behind that match. I actually think that's going to be a great match. I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on the match and the TNT title match mean for June 30th? Yeah, hey, uh, it was at this point of the show, I was starting to kind of teeter myself. Uh, I, I tried my best to pay as much attention to this match. Uh, it looked kind of sloppy, um, but granted, Julia Hart, you know, she's 19, um, and so she's, like, very, she's, I mean, still very fresh into the, the wrestling game, so, I mean, obviously, over time, I feel like she, she definitely has potential, and she'll get better. Uh, Penelope Ford looked also, I mean, in her own right, she, I, it just seemed like the chemistry just wasn't all there uh, overall, just between both women, uh, but, it, you know, it, it is what it is. But, yeah, the big, the bigger thing here, I feel like, was Miro coming out. I love the whole line of him saying he's God's favorite champion. That was a great, oh. great line by him. I, Miro needs to put that on a T-shirt. If I'm AEW, get that on a T-shirt for Miro. And I, I, I'd happily buy it. Um, but Miro oh, is too. God's favorite champion. I mean, hey, God, God loves Miro, man. God loves Miro. Get that trending. Um, but yeah, Miro continues to be one of the best things about pro wrestling as a whole right now. I mean, his, his run as TNT champion has just been great to watch. The dude is, has been built so great. You know, I mean, ever since he left Kip and Penelope, like, like I've been saying, like the dude has just been unstoppable. And so I'm very much looking forward to him and Brian Pillman squaring it up on that uh, first Wednesday show back on uh, June 30th. Uh, I think that will be a great one-on-one match. And th- this will be a great time for Brian Pillman to show what he can do in a one-on-one capacity because he's, he's shown that a lot in the, uh, in the independent scene in MLW. And I feel like on a big stage here in AEW, he'll uh, get an even bigger chance to show uh, what he's made of. I, I, I just thought about it in my head. I, I could just imagine myself uh, on the boardwalk or the beach down the shore, and I wear a T-shirt that says God's Favorite Champion. And I have people looking at me like, what the heck is this dude's shirt saying? He, he thinks he's God's favorite champion. 
I think that's funny. So yeah, yeah. I honestly, I would not be surprised. I mean, AW may, makes a shirt out of anything. I mean, anything you give Dippin them, they make a shirt out of it. <laughs> Dippin' dots. Like I, they, they made a Dippin' dot shirt, did they? Did they make one? I can't. Yeah, they did. They did. And then, then they made another. I want. I kind of want to get Jim Ross's new shirt. I don't know if you've seen it. Slobber knocker AF. I kind of want to get it. Uh, just because that's freaking awesome. I love that. <laughs> Man. Moxley has a bitch A shirt. So. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, I mean, AEW, man, they, they know how to make some t-shirts. I'll tell you, man, they really know how to get you with the t-shirts. <laughs> and some of them are funny, too, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, AEW, they, they just, they know how to market. They do, the, they do their marketing right, that's for sure. <laughs> Now we got some matches coming up for the next two weeks. Saturday night next week, we obviously had that Kenny Omega Jungle Boy match for the World Championship. And we also have Hangman Adam Page versus Powerhouse Hobbs. That is all the matches they've advertised, which is very weird for me because they advertised a plethora of matches leading up to the shows. And for next week, they only match two matches. So I guess we're going to have to be very keen onto AEW's Twitter page to see what matches we get on that next week's that next Saturday night show. Then the June 30th show, we obviously have uh, the TNT title match with Brian Pillman Jr. and Miro. Um, MJF versus Sammy Guevara, which really shocked me because I, I thought for sure that would be either on one of the theme shows or they would save that match for all out all the way till September. But they're doing it on June 30th, which I'm kind of shocked by. And then uh, I, I know you're hyped for this one. Oh, boy. We're going to get uh, also on June 30th. We're going to get Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, teaming up with Rebel <laughs> to face Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero. So what a barn burner that's going to be. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Um, I don't even know. I, I, I don't I'm know what you do so here with this match. What do you do? I'm hoping they kind of swerve us and we Vicky just comes out with somebody else. Like she has somebody else take her spot. Because I don't, man, if they go through with this tag match with Vicky like trying to wrestle, I, it's, I feel like we're going to be in for quite a disaster. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, what, but that, that really was one of the most peculiar things I saw on the show tonight. I'm like, I saw Vicky Guerrero on a graphic for a tag team match. And I'm like, huh? Huh? Like, I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I hope AEW, I, I, look, I trust Tony Khan. Maybe he has something up his sleeve. I don't know. But at base value right now, I'm really confused. And I'm also just like, I just, I'm, I can't even ponder it right now. So I, I don't know what they're going to do with this, but I'm, I'm hoping this doesn't, Make I just I just hope this isn't a train wreck. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I guess. I Who knows? Maybe maybe Vicky Guerrero is a as a workhorse. Maybe we maybe she's hiding something from us. Who knows? Maybe Vicky maybe Vicky's almost like the next coming of 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 uh you know Ray Phoenix or something. Who knows? Who, maybe she'll break out some freaking freaking some topes. Maybe she'll break out some Canadian destroyer. If Vicky if Vicky Guerrero is capable of pull, pulling off a Canadian destroyer. I'm gonna lose my mind if if <laughs> somehow, some way, I saw Big Girl pulling off a Canadian destroyer. I don't know what to do with myself at that point. I really don't. <laughs> hey, Cody hit a destroyer tonight. Have you ever seen Cody hit a destroyer before? I I think he hit one like once or twice before. I just can't remember when it was. I, I Dustin doing a destroyer is more impressive. The fact that he's 51 years old, or I think 52 now, and he freaking he the fact that he pulled off a Canadian destroyer, and then. Uh, who was it? Uh, Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express. In fact, that he can pull off a Canadian destroyer too. Like, what in the world, man? Everybody's popping destroyers nowadays. <laughs> yeah, man. And then um, main event, six minute tag again. I really had a hard time paying attention to this. I only got to see the ending. Um, I'm pretty sure the match was very good, so I'll go back and watch it maybe. Um, but Nick Jackson, he came out. He sprayed Penta in the eyes. He was confused. Carl uh, Anderson hit him with a neck breaker. And that was it. The Good Brothers and Matt Jackson won. And the Elite stood tall to end the show. That was really it. So Yeah, yeah so, solid main event. Um, 
Yeah, I at this point of the show, I'm like, because you know, there's a reason I have a, I, I was just drinking a coke because I, I wanted to try and keep myself a little bit awake, you know, for this review to to bring that energy that we always bring every week. But uh, you know, it, it makes me happy these Friday shows are over, man. Because like, once we get back into the fold of, of Wednesdays again, man, we're gonna be like pumped up. I know by the end of those shows, we're gonna be like way more pumped and. Uh, I'm just happy these Friday shows are over. But yeah, for what it was, um, this, it, the main event was solid. Uh, I tried my best to like pay attention as as much as I could, um, but I just I couldn't feel like any more excitement at the end of, by the end of the show. I'm just like kind of I'm just drained, and I'm just like okay, I'm just kind of waiting for the show to be over. Like, and it's like it's, and that's not like me with AEW. Like usually I'm like I want more, and I, I, of course I still want more, but like it's just. With these Friday shows, it's just, it's just kind of felt like it's dragged a little bit more. Like, last week, it felt like it really flowed like a regular Dynamite on a Wednesday. This yes. week, I feel like it was another one of the shows that just dragged a little bit. It was one of the more uneventful shows, but it was still a decent show for what it was. Um, but, yeah, uh, Matt Jackson, the Good Brothers, get the win. Uh, now we move on to next Saturday, which I'm very excited for. I, Jungle Boy and Kenny Omega headlining it. I mean, you already sold me right there. Uh, we'll see what other matches they announced since they only got two matches. That's very interesting how that this is next week's show and they only got two matches. But, well, just like you said, Joseph, we're just got to pay really close attention to AEW's Twitter page and to see uh, what other matches they announced for that card. Yeah, dude, July 7th can't come soon enough, if you ask me. Like, we're in for a big month in July. Just not in AEW. I I already know when a big month for a uh, big uh, July for AEW, but just for wrestling in general. Uh, before we go here tonight, uh, it's very uh, almost one a.m. here. Um, I want to get your quick thoughts on this. Uh, Thurs uh, Thursday night, uh, they did an angle in Impact Wrestling where um, Sammy Callahan report was he was apparently uh, quote unquote. He was fired from Impact Wrestling, and Scott Demore, uh, re, uh, no, it was Tommy Dreamer. It was Tommy Dreamer that reinstated Sammy Callahan, and he fired Don Callis, and therefore, uh, at Slam Reversary, we are officially getting Sammy Callahan versus Kenny Omega for the Impact World Title um, in front of fans as well. And I am. I, I am thrilled about that match, dude. That that's going to be amazing. I think. Absolutely, yeah. I'm I'm very much looking forward to uh, Callahan versus Kenny. I'm I'm definitely ordering Slam Anniversary uh, on July 17th uh, with with fans coming back, especially because Impact is definitely a company that needed fans back. I mean, I, I remember watching uh, what was it uh, what was the pay per view we watched? It was Omega and um, uh, Omega no. versus title versus title. What what was the pay per view? Oh, Rebellion, Rebellion. Okay, I was like, it's so late, folks. I'm trying to keep trying to jog my memory a little bit, but yeah, Rebellion. You know, I mean, the show overall. I mean, it was so hard to watch without fans, you know, and that's what that they that energy was missing sorely from that show, especially. So with Impact having fans coming back for Slave Reversity, that's a big, big upgrade, and so that definitely uh, causes me to want to watch the show more. But yeah, they got a they got a nice card set up right now, especially with the main event with uh, Callahan and Omega. Um, and hopefully, maybe sooner rather than later, we'll see Sammy Callahan pop up on an AEW Dynamite match. That guy is so great at what he does. The guy's a great talker. He's a great worker, and he's somebody who you definitely want on your program. Ladies and gentlemen, that's wrapping up the AEW Dynamite review here tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you who tuned into the review. Be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Field channel. We are going to end off the week with um smackdown tomorrow morning and hell in a cell on father's day night comment down below your thoughts about tonight's episode of aew dynamite um hit the like button if you like what myself and wesley williams had to say about tonight's review follow help me on twitter and instagram at colin underscore joseph we have 15 followers away 2.3k followers on twitter and if we can get that before sunday's hell in a cell pay-per-view um, I would appreciate that. And Wes, where can they follow you on Twitter, man? Well, you already know. You can follow me at big underscore Wes18 on Twitter. That is B-I-G underscore W-E-S-1-8. I will have reviews, or I live tweet for NXT on Tuesdays. Uh, sometimes for Elevation on Mondays, I'm kind of slacking with the, uh, the live tweeting for Elevation. I, 
find myself kind of busy on, on Monday evenings sometimes, but I am trying to do a little bit better with that. And of course, Wednesday nights, I'm live tweet for AW Diamond. And of course, you can find me here on Big Fight Field alongside my good buddy, Joseph Conlon, as we give you the best play-by-play analysis of AW Dynamite every single week. No more Friday shows, folks. No more Friday shows. We're done next Saturday. Big, big show. Jungle Boy versus Kenny Omega for the AEW World title. And then after that, we're back to Wednesdays, baby. And we got that big month in July. And, folks, it's going to be an exciting, exciting month for us wrestling fans. It's going to be an exciting month for all you Big Fight Feel fans out there because we're going to be giving you the fire just like AEW is bringing the fire every week with Dynamite. And, folks, I think that's it. Let's freaking end off this late night and man uh, i'm excited to uh celebrate 24 tomorrow i will say that <laughs> i am tired yeah. and i'm getting that's it. the consensus i think with everybody in pro and the pro wrestling community we're tired and we're just ready to go back to wednesdays <laughs> yeah four hours of wrestling on a friday night is a lot but i am out of here thank you guys for watching i'll see you for smackdown review tomorrow morning